well, I'm going to be making a pulley rig, showing you the way I do mine. It's probably no different to anybody else's, but I use all Trident Tackle components. The rig body is Berkeley Trilene, which is £80, and it's 0.89mm thick. The length of the main rig body is 44 inches. The only reason why it's the length of my freezer, I've just it's just where I make my rigs. When you cut off the rig body here, do it at an angle, quite a steep angle like that. So you've got this. I'll show why in a minute. You'll have that like that. <clears throat> to start off with the pulley rig, we get the aero pulley. There it is, the aero pulley. If I turn it that way, you can see you've got a slit here and you've got a little hole in line with my finger there. These cost £2.30 for a pack of 12. It's good value for money. To fit it on, you've got the slot at the bottom and a hole at the top. It goes through, this is a figure of eight. So you come through the bottom, like this. Go back through the little hole at the top. Which is right there, look. Like that. Bring the tag end through like this. And this can go back through the slot at the bottom. And it'll give you a figure of eight. I don't know if you can see inside there. You probably can't. But it goes through in a figure of eight. I think there is other ways people have tried to use them. I'm not 100%. But this way, it's smooth. And it's good. It's not just loose. It don't just drop. It's got a bit of tension there. But it is smooth. Right, the next part to it. Get a bead. These are six mil beads off eBay. Slide the bead on. At one end, I tie a swivel. These swivels are power swivels. And I think it's a size eight and a 195 pound braking strain. They're not the cheapest swivels on the market, but for the size of it and the braking strain, they're really good. It just keeps your rigs more neat rather than having big bulky swivels like I used to have. The knot, I go through the swivel, it's just a simple blood knot, and go around six times. I bet you was all counting that then, weren't you, to check? <laughs> and go back through the little loop there. Now you have it like this, give it a pull, just to get it straight, and give it a good wet with your gob. Get your preferred tool, I'll use a little punch through the swivel and pull it down. But when you pull it down, you see a lot of people pull them and they whack it down really fast. There's no need to. Just take your time when you pull it down. Like that. Nylon heats up when you pull it down. That's the reason for giving it a bit of spit. Try and stop it burning. There's the knot right there. It's nice and neat. And we'll cut this tag end off. You can go as close as you personally like. As you can see, I'll go really close, but I have faith in the knot. You can leave a couple of millimetres if you want to. Right to the other end of the rig, you can pull this down to the swivel now, look like this. The other end, put a bead on, again, six mil bead. Let that go down. Once you've got the bead on, get a thermolink, which is from Trident Tackle. These are Two quid for a pack of 24, these are. So it is good value for money. The reason for cutting the line at that angle is to put it through these. The £80 line is quite snug. As you can see, look, it goes through, but you won't get anything any bigger through. That's quite snug in there. Same knot again, just the normal blood knot, round six times, and go back through there, like that. Pull it so it straightens out, give it a good wet. Now I'll clip this thermolink onto one of my LEDs. It's onto a roto clip. I'll show you that in a minute. And you got this now. Put your finger over the tag end when you first start to pull. Just so you don't lose it, look. Now you've got to that point, give it a good pull. And that's the knot, look. Tag end off. And you've got your knot finished like that. 
This rig is almost finished, believe it or not. That's the main body of it. Goes through there, and as you come down to it then, to the bottom, you got one side with the thermolink and one side with the swivel. This is for your lead, basically. That's where the roto bait clip goes on, and you have your lead. This side, you have two options. You can tie your snood straight to that, or you can use a thermolink like I do. The reason I use a thermolink on this end is so I can unclip the snood. So if you want a double pat, or if you've got a fish to unhook, it's easier, you just unclip the rig with a rod on the rod rest, and you come back to your box where you snood, and you can sort the fish out, rebait up, clip it on, and cast back out. Otherwise, you're going to have to unclip the whole rig. The snood I personally use is Ultima Sea Strike. I've only been using this for about a year, but it's actually been really good, and it's not expensive really either. This is £50 and the diameter is 0.70. I've landed some decent fish on this as well. I had a Huss uh, beginning of this year, I think it was. It was £11, 4 ounce. If I can find a picture, I'll put it in now. While you're looking at that picture, I was tying this knot. Same knot again, around, a six, around six times. Pull it so it's straight. Give it a wet. Clip it back on to a, to something, like your lead, and pull it down. As you'll see, this will pull down a lot he easier than the £80. But when you get to this point now, you can push the knots down, like this. That's done, look. If you pull them down, it stops them catching on itself. Now you've got this, <clears throat> I've tied the thermolink onto my line on the spool. Leave it like this, it saves you wasting fishing line. Bring your pulley rig in, clip your thermolink onto the swivel, like that. Then get the aero pulley, and what you want to do with this is, pull it all the way to the top, like this. So you've got your lead line here. You can put a lead on it if you want to, because it does help it keep straight. But you want to pull that all the way to the top and then run your fingers down it like this, keep them aligned together. Until you come to the bottom right here. Now this clip here is what your lead goes on to. So what I do generally, I'll stop the line about there and I'll snip that off about here. Just like that. Now my hooks go onto this. The first hook that I use is my panel, which goes on, which is a Coxum Raw Chinu 2.0. I'll show you the hook now. It's a very small strung hook, and you've got a little kink on the eye, which makes it good for a panel. So what I do, I thread that on first. I thread it up out of the way, because I'm going to be tying the hook on at the bottom. Wrap around two or three times, and that's how you lock it in. The next hook that I use is a Kaiki wide mouth specimen. This is 4.0. This is my normal go to hook, but I do use 2.0 as well. As you can see, it's a very good hook. It's quite a thick gauge wire, and it's strong, and it's sharp as well. And they do seem to keep the edge really well. Same knot again. I do the normal blood knot around six times. I hold the tag end along the shank. And you can see, look, the shape of that now. To give it a gentle pull. And it because it straightens out. Find something to put your hook onto. I use my nail clippers with a hole. It don't damage the point or anything then. Same again. Pull it down. You can pull it down to there. Stop. Readjust and give it a good pull. Tag end off. Leave your tag end on this a couple of mil. I'd say like this. Leave a tag like that. If you can. Two, three mil, something like that. When you put this through your bait, this sort of helps anchor it on. And when you elasticate around it, this helps to stop it slipping and sliding. And that is the rig finished, believe it or not. It is actually really simple to make. It's not too difficult at all. 
Now you've got at the end the server link with your lead end. You've got the roto bait clip. I'll show you this now. That's the roto bait clip that I use. And what you do, the bigger loop at the bottom pulls out. Like that. Your lead goes onto there. You slide it back up. And as you'll see, the loop comes out at the top. That is where your thermalink goes. So we'll clip this on. And there's the roto bait clip ready for the hook. I've got a little thing up here. Hopefully you can see. I'm going to hang the rig up there and show you how it works. You've got to pretend now this is on your rod on the beach. And as you can see now, that's in that position where you put it into your bait clip. You hook a fish and you hit the fish and start winding. This is the hook side and it pulls look. And your lead is well up there, out of the way. Stops it getting stuck in the rocks and the weed and the reef. And when you let go, you can see how smooth that is. If I just release it actually, I'll show you. It don't just slam down. See what I mean? It's quite a smooth system. I'll bring the camera down lower and I'll show you how you put the bait clip in. This now, pretend, is attached to your rod on the shore. You've got your roto bait clip here, and then you've got your hook here. As you can see, it sits roughly there. You could have it sitting slightly lower, about there. But generally, mine sits just above the thermalink when I cut the line off here. And by the time I've tied the hook on, it uses that excess line. And I find this a good distance. Now your hook is baited up. You've got your panel hook on the top of the bait. You've got your clip. The hook goes into the clip there, and you close it, just like that, and that's it done. Now what the good thing is with these, as you'll see now, you're casting out, this hits the water as it, hit, as it lands, and it releases. When you hook a fish, on this side, because of the weight of the fish, this pulls, and it takes the lead all the way up back to the main line, and keeps it up above all the rocks and the reef. And the other good part to these clips, I'll show you now. That's in the clip now, as you can see. There. You can give this a really good shake and a wiggle and a wobble. And it still stays in. It does not fall out. And I've never had them not release when they hit the water. In the past, I won't name clips. I'm not going to name and shame. But I've had clips in the past. I've hooked into them, walking down the beach to cast. And with the rod bouncing... I've had the hook come out of the bait clip, so it means go back up the beach to your rod rest, put your rod back on your rest, and then reset it all, walk down, and it happens again. <laughs> it does it quite a lot, so it's quite annoying, and I use big baits, and sometimes with some clips it's a nightmare with big baits. The other part to it, I've cast out in the past with other bait clips, and they've not released. I've been fishing for 20, 30 minutes, brought it in, and it's still stuck in there. This has never happened with this clip. This always releases every single time it's a really really good design and they're smooth they're just brilliant and i'm not sponsored by these or anything like that i've paid for all this myself on the website with these if you spend 25 pound or above it's free postage and you get a hell of a lot of bits for that that you really do and you think you've got eight different colors i've got all mine in red but i think there's black there's purples oranges there's all sorts well anyway i'm going to stop waffling on and let you have a go at making the rig. You can do any length you like. I prefer 44 inches. You can go longer and you can go shorter. There is no right way of doing it. These rigs are perfect for rough ground fishing and the cod fishing. That's what I mainly use them for. And I have used them for ray fishing. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it's helped you out. If you can, give the video a like. Subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.